with Evangelist Renee Sellers on the prayer line, Monday through Friday, beginning at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday with devotion, prayer, and pronouncement of daily affirmations. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to say. Dial 1-712-770-4010 using access code 266 590. That's 1-712-770-4010 using access code 266-590. Set the atmosphere for your day. Say what you want to see on the prayer line with Evangelist Renee Sellers. to connect with customers. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, and we are live at 5 this morning on this Think About It Thursday morning, uh, Transformation Thursday. Actually, this is another day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is already May 28th, the end of May 2020, another day that the Lord has made, but they, they, they've been made real fast. They're coming back really, really fast. But we're thankful to God for this opportunity to come to you live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, 103.3 FM, 1400 AM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can also join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com. And you can join us on the call at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. There'll be a recap tonight uh, on 7 p.m. as we discuss what an evangelist is. We're going to discuss what an evangelist is or what is an evangelist. I think that might be more proper English. What is an evangelist uh, this morning? Uh, you may uh, already be operating where well, all of us should be evangelists right now because every believer of the body of Christ should be a minister and in the times that we're living in, I think it's important that everybody uh, do their part. We cannot be complacent anymore. We, we no longer can sit in the pews because many of us and not even back in our corporate worship uh, places and not even back in the building. So we have to use what we got and we have to work from where we are. I often say we don't work to be saved. We work because we're saved. And now it's time for us to truly be boots on the ground. We're beyond the four walls now. We're getting ready to transition back. But until we go back, we must be about our Father's business, occupy until Jesus comes. So we're going to talk about evangelism today, but before we get in to our subject, I'm going to ask evangelist Paulette Griffin to open our broadcast with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Lord God, you are worthy of glory. You're worthy of praise. There is none like thee. We thank you for the open heaven and the fresh anointing. We thank you for stirring up the very gifts in us, Lord God that we can come together from the north, the south, the east, and the west together in your name to learn more about thee, Lord God, to learn, Lord God, how we can have a deeper and closer relationship with you, Lord God. Thanking you right now, Lord God, for opening up the doors right now, Lord God, and giving us spiritual wisdom and knowledge to walk through those doors, Lord God. Thanking you, Lord God, for giving us spiritual wisdom and knowledge to stay away from the doors that you closed, Lord God. Thanking you right now, Lord God, for moving us to Jehovah, the Lord God, our creator, for creating us in your own image and making us a living nephew to be able to glorify and to praise our holy name. We thank you for what you've done and what you're yet to do, Lord God. We thank you for your arms of protection and watching over our family, friends, and loved ones, Lord God. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you move by your grace and power. Heavenly Father, let thy divine and perfect will be done as we go forth in victory and in praise, delivering thy word in season and out right right now, Lord God. We thank you for the Upper Room Outreach Ministries, Pastor Samuel Evangelist Renee Sellers, for bringing forth Command Your Morning Prayer Line on Foxy, 97.5 FM. We thank you, Lord God, for this day and opportunity, Lord God, to be able to boldly come before thy throne room of grace to obtain mercy, power, deliverance, and healing. We just give you glory and praise for all things. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, evangelist, uh, uh, 
Griffin, all the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, using what God gave her in the place that she is in, a prime example of what an evangelist, not only in the fivefold ministry gift of the evangelist, but God is using her in many ways in the area of evangelism, even in Las Vegas. So we're going to look at some Greek terms for evangelism. There are three main Greek words uh, that are used in connection with the ministry of evangelism in the New Testament. They all come from the same root word. They all come from the Greek word uh, from, from which we get the English word evangelist. Before, but they all come from the Greek word where we get the English word uh, evangelist. These three words are uh, euangelizo, euangelion, and euangelistes. And the first word, euangelizo, it means to announce good news. Euangeliso means to announce good news. It literally means to announce good news or glad tidings. And this word uh, describes is uh, describes the ministry, the work, and the activity of evangelism. This word is often translated preach. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 16 and verse 16 of the New King James Version of the Bible. Last night we talked about uh, the different divisions in the Word of God. While there are two testaments or covenants, the Bible is divided into eight sections. It's the, the Old Testament in four and the New Testament in four. The first section of the New Testament is the Gospels. Luke chapter 16 and verse 16, New King James Version, it says, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it. So there are times that this word, uh, euangelizo, uh, this Greek term for evangelist means to preach. Let's look at Acts chapter 5, verse 42. New King James Version of the Bible, Acts chapter 5 and verse 42. It says, in the New King James, and daily in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. I think if we really go back and look at how they taught in the in the uh, in the early church and the messages that they ministered, yes, there was uh, the apostles who brought correction. But if you look at what I just read, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Let's look at Acts chapter 8 uh, for another example example of euangelizo or to preach. Uh, Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. It says, therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. I want us to look that it says they went everywhere preaching the word Christ is preached in Samaria so they went everywhere preaching the word in Acts chapter 17 and verse 18 another example of euangelizo euangelizo or to preach Acts 17 and 18 now while Verse uh, 18, then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, encountered him, talking about Paul, and some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign goods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. So there are these are examples of this word, euangelizo, which means to announce good news or glad tidings, or it can be also translated preach. Another Greek term that we're going to look at this morning for evangelist, for the English word evangelist, is euangelion, euangelion. And it means the good news or the gospel, the good news or the gospel. It means a good news or a good message. It's the word that we often look at, translate as gospel. So euangelizo, euangelizo uh, means to preach the euangelion means the gospel. The, this word is descriptive of the message that an evangelist brings. We bring the gospel message. And although many things can be good news, this word is 
all is most specifically applied to God's saving grace made possible by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. This is, a, see, I think we got a little distracted by some things, even in the middle of the pandemic when we should be preaching the gospel, and we, there's still some levels of division as it relates to certain uh, executive orders. There was divisiveness. Uh, now that the, the president has made an announcement, there's a level of divisiveness, but that's not the way it should be. No matter what orders or what decrees or what announcements are made, our focus Focus should still be on preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Let me read Matthew chapter 4, 24, verse 14 again. And this gospel, talking about euangelion, uh, which is the good news or a good message or the gospel, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, to all nations. One of the uh, Greek uh, terms for, or one of the Greek English, English words for nation, as we look at this word in the Greek, one term for this is race. And so the gospel is to be preached in all the world as, as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 says, Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel, the euangelion, the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Romans chapter 10 verse 15, it says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring good tidings or of good good tidings of good things. How beautiful are the, are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Romans 10, 15, those three uh, biblical examples of scriptures relative to euangelion or the gospel, the good news or the good message. And then the third Greek term that we're going to talk about today that is relative to the English word evangelism is euangelion. Galistes, you want Galistes, and it means a preacher or a messenger of good news. Uh, this word is descriptive of the person who brings or announces the good news and is usually translated evangelist in the New Testament. This word is only found three times in the the New Testament is used in Acts 21 and relative to Philip. Acts 21 and 8 is used in the list of the fivefold ministry. This is one of the fivefold ministry leadership gifts or the, the ministry gifts that Christ gave to the church. Acts chapter 4, uh, and he gave some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And then Paul instructed Timothy uh, in 2 Timothy 4 and 5 to do the work work of an evangelist. So where we get you on Galistes, this is to a preacher or messenger of good news. So we just gave three uh, 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 distinctive uh, examples of the word evangelist, the Greek word euangelizo, to announce good news. It describes the activity or the work of the individual. The euangelion, the good news or a good message, is the message that is given. The good news is not talking about the individual, it's talking about the message that is given. Euangelisti is uh, a preacher or messenger. This is talking about the person that is speaking. And, and so what are the different expressions of evangelists as we look in the Word of God? Well, first of all, we got to look at the fact that Jesus functioned in all of the fivefold ministry gifts. He could not give us what he did not have. He, he gave us, out of the, the, the beauty of who he was, he gave us what he had. He was an apostle. He was a prophet. He, he was an evangelist. He was a teacher and a preacher. And he was, an, as we talk about him as, as an evangelist, the word euangelizo occurs ten times in the Gospel of Luke, and it only occurs one other time in the rest of the Gospels, and that's Matthew. 
Luke gives a summary of the, this ministry of an evangelist as, as it relates to Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 uh, through 19. It says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Luke chapter 4, uh, verse 18 through 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and, and because he, uh, Jesus, is, is upon me, Jesus Christ, because he has anointed me to preach preach the the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord of the lord there is a first mention as we talk about in hermeneutics of luke 4 in isaiah chapter 61 isaiah chapter 61 uh, is also the first mention of this isaiah often prophesies about the coming of the Messiah, the Spirit of the Lord, Isaiah 61 and 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. He says uh, to set liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And and so as we look at Jesus as an evangelist or we look at Luke, he lists six things that were going to characterize the ministry of Jesus Christ as an evangelist. First of all, he's going to preach the gospel. Secondly, he's going to heal the brokenhearted found right in the text. Third, he's going to preach deliverance to the captives. Fourth, preach and recovery of sight to the blind. Uh, five, set at liberty those that are bruised. And six, preaching the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord had to do with the year of Jubilee and the year of release in Israel. In the year of Jubilee, all debts are canceled and lost property is restored to its original owner. That's what happens in the year of Jubilee. And Luke portrayed the preaching of the gospel as being a primary purpose for Christ and being sent. And ladies and gentlemen, that should be our purpose, is to preach uh, the gospel, is to be a witness for Jesus Christ, is to not only represent him, but represent him to those that are lost. As we are getting ready to go back into our buildings, how many people will we bring with us? How many people do we want to bring with us? How many people are we going to at least reach out to and be and, and minister the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Luke chapter 4, verses 42 and 43. It says, Now when it was day, he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowd sought him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. I can't just stay in one place. And, 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 and the evangelists in the fivefold, many times, they don't just stay in one place. And they don't just preach in one place. They, they go out. They preach in different areas. The pastor's main responsibility is to shepherd the flock of God, to, 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 to shepherd those within the ministry. They may out, go out at times, but the, the, the main function of an evangelist is that they do not stay in one place. They go out to preach the gospel. They go out to proclaim the gospel, and they have the ability uh, to minister liberty to those that are bound. Jesus sent his disciples out uh, to evangelize. Luke chapter 9, as a matter of fact, to work the works of God, to evangelize. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 2, and then verse 6. 
Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So they departed and went through the towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Can I take a look at this word, authority, in Luke chapter 9? My question for, for us today is, do we recognize the authority that we have? And do we understand that as believers, because of Jesus Christ, we have not lost that authority, that because of Jesus Christ, we have not lost that authority. But what's going on in the world today is trying to get us to minimize the authority that we have through Jesus Christ. It's Christ gave them power. Christ gave them power. They did not have to have it until he gave it to them, nor could they heal until he gave it to them. After they received what Christ gave them, they were sent out to do to work the works that he did. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in Acts, the Bible says, and you shall receive power, Acts 1 and 8, where Holy Spirit has come upon you. If we have been baptized or we feel or are filled with the Holy Spirit, then we still have the same authority that they had to cast out demons and to cure diseases. Can I say something about that? Listen, coronavirus is not exempt from the authority of the, the of the disciples of Jesus Christ. Coronavirus is not exempt from this mandate. Ladies and gentlemen, if they had authority to cure diseases, then the Lord knew that this disease was going to come on the scene. And the same authority that they had, I need somebody to help me pray, is the same authority that they had back then is the same authority that we have today. Listen, don't allow uh, the news or what's going on today to cause us to minimize our authority. If there is any doubt, if there is any fear, you are getting away. In the, that is getting in the way of the authority that has been given to us by God. He says that he, he sent his disciples out and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to what? Heal the sick. Can I ask another question? Or no, I'm going to make a comment. We shouldn't be afraid of something that we have been given authority to deal with. We shouldn't be afraid of something that we have been given authority to deal with. I understand science, but I also understand scripture. I need to say that again. I understand that, that and, and, and from what I have seen and observed is even some leaders are putting more emphasis on science science than they are scripture come on somebody well I, uh, I, I'm hearing I, we got to look I, I, and and I heard one leader I mean like well-known high-profile leader said we have to pay attention to the science and I was like are we really going there I said no we have to pay attention to the scripture because the scripture has greater authority than science I need Miranda white to pray with her mother in the Lord this morning, that the, the scripture has more authority than science. Do not give science more authority than scripture. Let me move on because I'm getting a little excited. And, and so the early church continued the work of evangelism. The early church continued the work of evangelism. Listen, they, they, they went everywhere preaching the word of God, Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. They went everywhere preaching the word. In Acts chapter 8, verse 25, uh, they preached in villages and in towns. In other words, they preached everywhere that they went. It, it says, so when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. In many villages of the Samaritans. Jesus appointed certain people to be 
uh, evangelist. This is where we get the, the, the fivefold ministry in Ephesians uh, chapter 4 and verse 11. And then if we look at Acts 21 and 8, uh, Philip is the only one, aside from Jesus, is the only one in the New Testament who is actually called an evangelist. Aside from Christ, Jesus, Philip is the only one in the New Testament who is actually called an evangelist, the, the, the office of the evangelist and or the ministry leadership uh, uh, gift of evangelist. Uh, Acts chapter 21 and verse 8, it says, On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist. Underline or highlight this. Entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, who was one of the seven and stayed with him. So therefore, what we can do is we can use his life as a model for evangelism. As we look at Philip's life, he had a traveling ministry. He had a groundbreaking ministry. He had a Holy Spirit-led ministry. He had a ministry having the ability to preach and communicate the gospel. He had a ministry that can expect signs and wonders and healing and deliverance. He, he was an expert in winning souls, private, and, and, and a harvest ministry, public. He, an example of the practice and methodology of evangelism. He was an equipper of the local church. All of the five ministries of Ephesians 4, the apostle, the prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher share this same function. The evangelist does not just evangelize the saints. But the evangelist equips the saints it, uh, to evangelize. Let me say that again. As do with the fivefold ministry, they 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 equip the saints to do the work of ministry. Do we really? Do we recognize? Can we, can can I share something with you? Do we understand that it is it is it that the leader, the fivefold ministry leader, should not be doing all the evangelism in the uh, 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 in the ministry. That the leader should not be the only one planning evangelistic outreach events. That the leader, can I say this again, is should not be the only one telling people uh, when to go out. Can I help you this morning that we should be doing this on a regular basis anyhow because it's the leader's responsibility to equip us to do this work. And I get somebody to help me say amen. It's the leader's responsibility to equip us us. And my question is, I know that many are being equipped, but are you operating in what you have been equipped to operate in? Are you truly operating in what your leader has equipped you to do, or are we leaving it up all up to the leader? Are we leaving it up to the leader to say, let's go out and walk in the community. Let's go out and do something for the elderly. Let's go out and do something for those in, in, in certain areas this week. Are we leaving it up to the leader or, or are we using what we have been equipped to do as a believer as a follower of Jesus Christ it really should be in us to have a desire to see other people say my brother mentioned something that was going on in his ministry yesterday and I was like I love your excitement about the things you do at your church. I love your excitement about the things of God. And he said, he said, not everybody loves God the way you do. And that really is the key. We say we love God, but when we really love him, We'll work the works of God. We'll do what is necessary to, to reach out to others. How will men know that we're God, God's disciples by the love that we have for one another? And if you really love people, you don't want to see them die and go to hell. When you really love people, you don't want to see them lost. When you really love God, you do everything that is necessary to advance the cause of Jesus Christ. He was excited about going to a church meeting. And I was like, I love your excitement about going to 
to, not everybody gets excited about meetings. Some people uh, uh, rebel on meetings, but my brother was excited, and he said, not everybody loves God the way you do. Is that the problem with many of us who say we believe? Now, we say we love God, but we don't really show that we love God. Let me take a quick break for station ID. We are live at 5, talking about what is an evangelist this morning. We're live at 5 on WHLJ 97.5 FM, 103.3 FM, 1400 AM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. We're also online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y, 97.com, and you could join us on the call at 712-770-4010, access code 266-590. There'll be a recap tonight at 7 p.m. on WHLJ. Let me honor my pastor for just a moment. I don't think I did. Pastor Samuel Sellis III. But it's it's a beautiful thing when the, the, the person that you grew up with, that you fought with, that you hit, that you beat him upside the head, that he broke his arm arm hitting you upside the head, that you fought most of your your childhood and and, and really didn't like each other in early adulthood, (laughs) listen, that you're both preaching the gospel and you can share the gospel with your sibling and your brother can recognize how much you love God and you can recognize how much he loves God. And ladies and gentlemen, listen, that is not uh, uh, common in a lot of places. And so you're in a good place when your family recognizes how much you love the Lord. All believers have been called by God to 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 the work of evangelism and to be a witness for the Lord. Remember I said not too long ago that the the Greek term for witness is martyr. It is martyr. So my question, it it means, and a martyr is someone who is willing to die for their, or is killed for their faith. And and listen, if you're going to do this, you got to be willing to die for your faith. And and listen, if you're not willing to die physically, you got to be, even to the point of death, even if that is something that that happens, you got to be willing to give up your life for Jesus Christ and for the life of somebody else. You got to be willing to give up self so you can serve the Savior. Come on somebody, so you can do the work that Jesus did. Uh, and, and so and so. but the scripture says that, but you shall receive power, Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Let me say something Something about receiving power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. When we are baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit, we should not be the same as we were before. We, should, as a matter of fact, listen, we should not be the same uh, 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 believers as we were before. We, nothing about us should be the same. Nothing. There's something, if we are the same and have the same mindset and same attitude that we had, listen, uh, 10 years ago, then there is some maturing that needs to occur. I don't know where we're missing the mark, but there is some maturing that needs to occur. What does it mean to be a witness? Well, first of all, it means we've got to give up ourselves to serve the Savior. It means to be, a, uh, to, to, to be ready to give testimony of what you have seen and heard. Acts chapter 4, verses 18 through 20. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Uh, 1 John chapter 1 verses 1 through 4, it says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life, the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be 
full. And so one of the uh, uh, ways that we are a witness is that we got to be ready to give a testimony of what we have seen and heard. How many of us share the gospel message after when your pastor preaches? And, and this is why we must make sure that we preach what we've seen and heard, that we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us not go back uh, to the same mentality that we had before where we're preaching at the people and not to the people. Let us preach the gospel right now in these last days as we see time really is winding up. I know grandmama used to say it and grandmama, great grandmama used to say it, but we're saying it now because I believe that we're right on the brink of Jesus coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. I believe that we're right on the brink of believers being uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 coming to fruition, that we, those that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air when the trumpet sounds. I truly believe we're on the brink. Now is not the time to be distracted and divisive. I'm going to move on. And so to be a witness means to let our light shine, though, through, 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 let our light shine, listen, and, and, and through the works that we do. In, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The, the works that we do here on earth are not to make us, ourselves uh, uh, look good. It's not to, uh, uh, it, it, even though the Lord said, told Abraham that I'll, I'll make your name great, let the Lord do that. We don't need to be trying to do that on our own. And let, let God do that. If, 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 your, if your name is great and well known, watch this. Let God do it. And don't let a, a pride and, and arrogance swell up as he does it. And so we have to be remembered that letting our light shine is for the glory of the Father so that men will see what we do and glorify God. Whether you're feeding the hungry, it's not about us. It's about God getting the glory. If you're clothing the naked, it's not about us. It's about God getting the glory. If you're passing out food, it's not about about us. It's about God getting the glory. Acts chapter 10 verses 36 through 39. The word which God sent to the children of Israel preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. Can I say this? It was after Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power. After he was baptized, he began his earthly ministry. If we are going to be effective in witnessing for Jesus Christ, then ladies and gentlemen, we need the Holy Spirit. It says in verse 39, and we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they killed by hanging on a tree. And, and, and listen, to be a witness means to share the gospel any time the opportunity makes itself available. Any time the opportunity. I work in a profession where that, that is, uh, uh, I, is that at one point it wasn't really, uh, they didn't really want you to, to, to tell people, talk about Jesus, but if the door opened, we were okay. If they opened the door, we were okay. There was even a moment where we had one director who, who said, get rid of all the religious uh, materials and the religious pictures, every cross, every Bible, all those out of, the, out of your office, out of the vans, get rid of all of that. And, and he said, listen, that does not need to be seen. We don't want to offend any other religion. Can I help you? He wasn't there very long. But anyway, Anyway, uh, uh, to be a witness means to share the gospel when the door of opportunity is open. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, it says, And pray for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, Apostle Paul, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. How many of us pray for our leaders to open their mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which they are 
ambassadors that may, may that they may boldly speak. We are quick to criticize them if they say something wrong. But how many of us pray that they say what's right? Can I get somebody to pray for your leader? We often criticize them and judge them and gossip about them when they say something wrong. But how many of us pray as Paul is making the request to Ephesus to pray that that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth to make known the mystery of the gospel. I want to encourage you as we get ready to return to consistently pray. As a matter of fact, not even wait until you go back into your building. Pray for your leaders now. Pray for your leaders now. Now, how many of you have been praying for your leader that is doing everything they can to get the gospel out with every, by any means necessary? How many of you have been praying for your leaders as they are doing some things that they normally do not do as it relates to live streaming their services and, and preaching from their office and preaching from their living room, putting up podiums in their living room? How many of us are praying for leaders that are doing the best that they can to shepherd the flock of God? How many of us are truly praying for our leaders who are doing the best that they can in the midst of a moment that many of us have never seen. Unless you are 100 years old, you've never been in a pandemic. We've never seen been preached and pastored in a pandemic. So we got to be mindful. Let us all be mindful not to be critical, but prayerful. Don't be critical, but prayerful. Be a witness to share the gospel message when the door of opportunity is open. Every member of the body of Christ should be evangelist right now. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 through 4. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ. Do you recognize that doors are supposed to be opening for us to preach the gospel, whether it's on the street or at a major conference? Doors are supposed to be opening for us, and doors will open for those who are faithful to their assignment. And so God would pray that God would open to us a door for the word to speak. Speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. And so to be a witness, to be a witness for Jesus Christ, it means to be ready to give a testimony to what you have seen and heard. It means to live a life that attests to your confession. Uh, in in uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5 through 7, we got to live a life that, that, that says, follow me like Paul as I follow the example example of Christ. We got to be like Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 through 7, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit so that you became exalted examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. We are supposed to be living epistles read of men. We are supposed to be examples and, and representations. And that as we are ambassadors for Christ, we should, we should represent him so that peop, when people see us, they see Jesus. When people see us, whether we're walking in our office a walking in Walmart, when people see us, they should see Jesus. And so to be a witness means to testify to what we've seen and heard. To be a witness means to live a life that attests to our confession, what we believe. First Corinthians 11 and 1, imitate me or follow me just as I follow Christ. To be a witness means to let our light shine so that that people can see the works that we do and give God the glory. To be a witness means to share the gospel message whenever the opportunity presents itself. So nobody is exempt from doing the work of the evangelist. Nobody is exempt from, from ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nobody is exempt from testifying to what you have seen and heard. Nobody is exempt 
from living a life that is pleasing to Christ and representing Christ in this cold, dark world. So now that we know what an evangelist is, now is the time to put what we have shared into action. Now that we have this understanding, now is the time to put this word, this message into action. That's all I have time for today. And I'm going to ask Evangelist Darlene Gant with a few moments that we have to take us in with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you, Father, for how you so faithfully watched over us all night long as we slumbered and we slept, Father. We thank you for allowing us to enter into a new day with brand new mercies, Lord. We take it not for granted, but we praise you in all things, Father, for we know that you know what's best for us. Heavenly Father, this morning we ask you, Lord, Father, to forgive us, Father, for anything that we said, thought, or did that was not pleasing to you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come with repentant hearts, Lord, because we mean to please you, Lord. We mean to live holy before you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we keep your commandments is what our desire is, Lord. Heavenly Father, so we pray today, Father, that you will guide us, that you will lead us, Father, in every way, Father, lead us, Father. Father, we pray to have an attentive ear to hear what you say to us, Lord. We pray, Father, that we will follow your lead, Father, in all things, Father. Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you today, Father, to cleanse our hearts, Father. Renew our minds through your word, Lord. Father, as we open up our Bibles to read today, to study today, Father, Heavenly Father, minister to our hearts, Father. Oh, Father, bring a word of correction, Father, where there is error, Lord. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Father. We thank you, Father, for we know that you're committed and you care for us, God. We thank you for your faithfulness, for the love, for the compassion that you show us, Lord, time and time again. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for we realize, Father, we are nothing without you, and we can do nothing without you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today for our families, Father. We ask you, Father, to keep us together, Father, having a heart and a mind to love one another, Father. Oh, Father, where there is anger, Father, we pray, Father, for forgiveness to be found in our hearts, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray to be peacemakers in our families, Lord, loving one another, Father, showing and demonstrating the love, Father, that you say that we ought to have, Father, loving thy neighbor as thyself, Father. Heavenly Father, we give you praise today. Father, for each member of our family, Father. Oh, Father, we pray to be living epistles read of men before them, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Father, for our children. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will watch over our children and our grandchildren, Father, as they leave their homes today, Father, wherever they may be, Father. Guide them and keep them covered, Father. Oh, Father, let your angels of protection be with them, Father, everywhere they go, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father, for their souls to be saved, Father. Before they leave this world, Father, we pray Father, to have the opportunity to receive salvation, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come this morning also, Father, asking you, Father, oh, Father, remember all the unsaved souls all across the world, Lord. All of them that don't know you're in the part of their sins, Lord. Oh, Father, we pray, Father, that you send messengers to them, Lord. Oh, Father, let them hear the truth, Father. We pray, Father, that the day that they hear your voice, they heart not their hearts against you, Lord. Oh, Father, we pray that their hearts be tender, Father. Heavenly Father, for salvation, Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and we thank you, Jesus. Ah. Oh, Father, for the sacrifice that he made, Father. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for what you did on Calvary cross. Oh, Father, that we might be saved, Father. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We give you glory today, God. Heavenly Father, we ask you to look down upon every ministry, Father. Oh, Father, every pastor, Father. Oh, Father, strengthen, Father. Our pastors, our leaders, Father. Oh, Father, we ask you, Father, to make a way for them out of no way, Father. As they continue to go forth to do your will, Father, in these times, Father, in these times that seem to be so uncertain, Lord, in these times of struggle and suffering, God. Heavenly Father, give them the strength to stand, my God. Oh, Father, give them the words to speak out of their mouths, Father. Oh, Father, let your anointing be on their lips, Father. Oh, Father, they continue to go forth. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, winning souls for your kingdom, my God. Heavenly Father, we pray, Father, that you bless them financially, Lord. Bless them spiritually, Lord, my God, and we thank you this morning, Lord. Oh, Father, bless them in their health, my God. Energize them in their bodies, God. Heavenly Father, we ask you that you bless them, Father, with people that are willing 
healing workers, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you for our leaders today, Father. Heavenly Father, all of those that lift up their hand in holiness to praise you and worship you, God. Oh, Father, for you're worthy, my God. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless each and every one on the prayer lines this morning, Lord. Heavenly Father, all of those that listen in, Father. Oh, Father, we pray blessings over them, Father. Oh, Father, we pray, Father, this morning, Father, when they leave the prayer line, Father. Oh, Father, what they've heard from the woman of God will stay on their minds, Lord. Will stay in their hearts, Father. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father. Heavenly Father, that not one hallelujah, oh, Father, that heard the woman of God today, Father, will forget what they've heard, Father. Oh, Father, we were praying that they will apply it and listen, ha, attentively each and every time that they call in, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, today we are praying for all of those that are sick in their body, Father. Oh, Father, no matter what the sickness is, we know, Father. Oh, Father, that you're able to heal, ha. Oh, Father, no matter what they're going through, Father. Oh, Father, every financial woe, Father. Oh, Father, you're able to provide, Father. And we're asking you right now in the name of Jesus, ha. Oh, Heavenly Father, make provisions for each and every one, Father. Oh, Father, they're having problems in this time, Lord. Oh, Father, they don't know, Father, ha. Oh, Father, where all the resources are, God. Oh, Father, but you are the God of resource, ha. And, Father, we are praying that you're blessed, ha. Oh, Father, you put food on the table, my God, ha. Oh, Father, you make sure that their rent is covered, my God, ha. Oh, Father, keeping a roof over their head, Lord, ha. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Father, ha. Oh, Father, we bless your name, Father, ha. Oh, Father, for all the mighty miracles, hallelujah, that you've already done, ha. Oh, Father, miracles that you're doing right now, God, ha. Oh, Father, for somebody, hallelujah, is rising up off of their bed of affliction, my God, ha. Oh, Father, somebody, hallelujah, is telling someone of your goodness and your mercy, ha, because they're walking in total healing, my God, ha. When the doctor said there was no hope, God, you are God of hope, glory. Heavenly Father, we give you the glory today, God. Heavenly Father, we pray today, Father, for our community, Father. Oh, Father, we're praying for safe communities, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, we're praying for people that are concerned, ha, and they don't mind getting on their knees, ha, crying out for their neighbor's son, ha, crying out for their neighbor's daughter, my God, ha. Oh, Father, we pray today for everyone that's being abused, ha. Oh, Father, all of those that are shedding the innocent blood, Lord, ha. Heavenly Father, we are praying, Father, ha. Oh, Father, you remove the abuse was out of the situation, my God, ha. Oh, Father, we ask you today, Father, ha. Oh, Father, remove them, Father, hallelujah. Oh, Father, that they can be healed, ha. And they can be whole, my God, ha. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those that are kidnapped and taken against their will, my God, ha. Oh, Father, they can be returned home, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, for your all-seeing God and you know all things, ha. Oh, Father, you know every holding place, my God, ha. Oh, Father, we're praying that you send your angels, ha. Oh, Father, your angels, hallelujah. Oh, Father, to warn their behalf, God, ha. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, Father. And, Father, we're praying, Father, hallelujah, for our state government. We're praying for our cities, ha. We're praying for our nation, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, for the men and the women that are in political positions of power, ha. Oh, Father, we pray that they will receive godly counsel, ha. Oh, Father, that you're a blessed Father, ha. Every branch of government place godly people in those offices, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, that will consider you, my God, ha. Before they make any decisions, they'll consider you, Lord, ha. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to bring change, ha. Oh, Father, we ask you, Lord, to bring deliverance, Father, ha. Oh, Father, we ask you, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Father, to let us stand, ha. Oh, Father, in the body of Christ having no divisions, my God, ha. Oh, Father, but are living on purpose, Father, to do your will, ha. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Father, for the opportunity to come and pray, Lord. Oh, Father, we thank you, God, for, Father, we understand, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, that prayer changed things, Father, ha. Oh, Father, so we don't mind, ha. We don't mind calling Calling on your holy name, my God, ha. We ask you to bless Dr. Renee Sellers and Pastor Samuel Sellers, ha. And all of the ministries they have their hands to, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, bless Upper Room Outreach Ministry, God, ha. Oh, Father, bless Victoria's Living Bible Institute, God, ha. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless Command Your Morning, Lord, ha. Oh, Father, we thank you for Mr. Lee, ha. And all of his staff that allow these broadcasts to go forth, ha. Oh, Father, bless them, Lord, ha. And a mighty special 
special way, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we thank you, Father, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, for this opportunity, Father, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, let us conti- continue to stay connected in love, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, in love, Father God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, let us be careful what we say out of our mouths, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, clean our mouths, hallelujah, from the inside out, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, cleanse our eyes that we can see, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, Father, anoint our ears, my God, so that we can hear, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we give your glory today, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we bless your name, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for every opportunity, Father. Oh, Father, to praise you, to worship you, Father, ha. Huh? Because you are worthy, ha. Huh? You are King of kings and you are Lord of lords, ha. Huh? Almighty God, there is none like you, Lord, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, when we lay our heads down, Father, it's all because of you, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, when we rise, Father, it's all because of you, my God, ha. Huh? Oh, Father, we thank you. We praise your Father. Oh, Father, we forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, belongs to you, Father. And all of these blessings, Father, we ask you, Lord, hallelujah, in your Son Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you. Amen. And it is so. And we pray today that someone has heard the woman of God. And you're not saved, but you decided today is the day that you desire. You want to be saved. You want a change to take place in your life today. As I say the salvation prayer, this is your opportunity. Repeat after me, please. Father, it is written in your word that if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Therefore, Father, I confess that Jesus is my Lord, and I make him Lord of my life right now today. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I renounce my past life with Satan, and I close the door to all of his devices. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Jesus is my Lord, and I am a new creation. All things have passed away. Now all things have become new in Jesus' name. If you repeated that prayer after me, we say welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You made a life-changing decision, and you have become a new creation. Oh, we thank you, and we pray that you will find a ministry, that you'll be led to a ministry where you can be nurtured, you can grow, you can develop, and learn all that you can about our Heavenly Father and his desire for you. And we thank you once again for becoming a member of the body of Christ. At this time, I release the line back to Dr. Renee Sellers of Command Your Morning. Amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Thank you, Evangelist Gant, and thank you all for listening to Command Your Morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. I want to encourage you with First John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And you, who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. If you believe that, you can decree and declare, I win, I am victorious. That's it. God bless you. Those on the call, please remain on the line. Come on, everybody, get your feet happy. Let's go. Come on. And friends, for the last hour, you have been listening to Command Your Morning Prayer Line, live from the Upper Room Ministries Incorporated this morning, 702 Austin Davis Parkway, out of Waycross, Georgia, where the pastor is, Pastor Samuel Sellers III. The host of Command Your Morning was Evangelist Dr. Renee Sellers. Don't forget it comes your way Monday through Friday now. That's 5 a.m. until 6 a.m. At a recorded portion of the program in its entirety, 7 p.m. until 8 p.m. Monday through Friday on the Glory Bound Train. Listen online at www.foxy. 97.com. Command Your Morning is a service of the Upper Room Ministries Incorporated, 702 Aussie Davis Parkway, Waycross, Georgia. I believe, I believe you. I trust, I trust. Come on.